Welcome, my name is Chris Adams. I'm the Director of Medical Education here at Arthrex and a practicing orthopedic surgeon. Today we're gonna to be talking about the syndesmosis tightrope repair for the treatment of high ankle sprains. We have with us in the Arthrex studio, Dr. Norman Waldrup from Andrew Sports Medicine in Birmingham, Alabama. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me. So what compelled you to start using the syndesmosis tightrope in your practice for athletes with syndesmotic injuries? In our practice, we see a lot of high-level athletes, both collegiate and professional. And the first question they all ask is, Doc, when can I get back? The tightrope has been a um, big addition to my practice and our armamentarium to allow us to, to get guys back quicker. Well, what features have you found most valuable? The tightrope is, is very easy to use. It's a simple construct. It's knotless. It allows for us to get the reduction right. People um, have, um, sometimes screws can be an issue. Um, if you're using screws, it can over constrain the joint. It can, the screws can break. And, the, and with the tightrope, you don't have to worry about any of that. Well, can you review with us today your patient evaluation with a syndesmotic injury? Sure. When we evaluate these guys and see them on the field, often, oftentimes the bad uh, high ankle sprains, guys can't ambulate. They can't walk off the field. Once we get them on the sidelines or in the locker room, we can, we can better evaluate them. Oftentimes they'll have a positive mid-shaft fibular squeeze. They'll have a positive external rotation stress test. They'll have uh, pain and tenderness greater than five centimeters above the joint. All those things indicate a more severe injury. In those, in those cases, we'll go ahead and get an MRI. And on the MRI, if we see that two of the ligaments are injured, I'll recommend that we, we take them to surgery for a stress, um, stress test, examination under anesthesia and arthroscope. And if the stress is positive, which often the case it is, well, I'll use the tightrope to stabilize the syndesmosis. So along those lines, what's your surgical technique? Sure, so um, initially I'll, I'll scope the ankle. We want to look for intraarticular pathology, uh, cartilage damage, torn ligaments. Uh, I'll, I can better assess the uh, instability. I'll clean up the inflammatory factors in the joint. And once, I've do once I'm done with that, we'll um, turn our attention to the tightrope. I'll make a small incision on the lateral fibula about uh, two centimeters in length, and I'll use two diverging tight ropes. Oftentimes I'll use a plate um, to try to help uh, spread out some of the force because one of the things that, that we worry about can be, can be bone pain. So uh, a plate is a good adjunct to allow us to avoid some of those problems. So can you pass on any technical pearls that you've learned using it? Uh, sure. I, I think the most important part is, is take your time. Uh, make sure that you're on the center of the fibula, um, that, uh, that you're adequately and appropriately reducing the joint. The tightrope is very easy to use, um, and so it's, it's more about technique to make sure that you have the syndesmosis reduced. Once you do that, just make sure your buttons are both making good contact with the bone. You can diverge the tightropes, make it a strong construct, and it'll hold the ankle stable. So there's some great pearls. So can you describe your return to play for athletes with the syndesmosis uh, tightrope compared to conventional screws? One of the things we worried about when we were using screws is stiffness. Were the screws going to break? We would, we would typically hold the athlete back a little bit um, for fear that the screws would break. First of all, you don't have to go back for a second surgery, so you don't have to worry about any of that. Um, I'll, I'll get them going really fast. For the first four days, it's all about swelling control. After that, we'll start range of motion exercises. Oftentimes, we'll get them walking uh, day four, day five after surgery, running day eight, day nine, and cutting as soon as they can after that. What I found is I don't slow them down. If they can do it, I'll let them do it. Uh, typically, I tell patients it takes them three to four weeks to return. Well, wow, it's amazing. So along those lines, do you worry about the incision? Do you use any particular post-op dressing? Absolutely. The, uh, the quicker we let guys go back, the more I've uh, worried about the incision. I've had guys play with sutures in, and I found that I wasn't worried, about this, uh, wasn't worried about the stability of the ankle, that I was worried about the wound problems. So I started using jump start as a way to kick start, for a better way of putting it, the wound healing. I think that, uh, that has been a, a big help to these guys and it takes a little bit of a, the worry out of it for us. Well, that's truly amazing. Norm, thank you once again for joining us today. I appreciate it. Thank you.